What's up guys, Graham from Great Scott Gaming here and welcome to our new Let's Play series. Today we're going to be playing the Beginner's Guide, which is a, a small indie game that some of you guys may have heard a lot of chatter about recently. Um, it's from a guy called Davy Redden, who's the uh, creator of the Stanley Parable, which uh, incidentally, Stanley Parable is another indie game which I highly recommend uh, everybody check out. It's brilliant little piece of artwork. Um, I'm not sure if it's, I don't think it ever came to consoles, I think it's just available on Steam. Um, so this is this is his kind of follow up, it's not done by the, the full studio that done the Stanley Parabell, Par Parabell? Parabell! Um, <laughs> Stanley Parable, just him, um, as a little solo project. So I already know a bit about what this, this game is and, and actually know some, some spoilers for it already just because I've heard some, some chatter about it. Um, throughout the industry, so I'm not I'm not going to get into any of that before we start. I'm just going to go straight into it, um, and you guys can hopefully experience it first hand for yourself, um, or second hand <laughs> vicariously through me. Um, so yeah, let's let's crack on. Please make sure your audio is on. Yes, I'm aware of the, the, the was they controls, I'm, I'm not a total moron. Please continue. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, <laughs> he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. <laughs> and of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. What the fuck is that? <laughs> so, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay. Bit of a strange start. I 
and uh, just as a point of reference, actually, from from doing a bit of research, that email address that that Davy gave out, that's his real email address. That's not a fake. That's his actual email address. So people can actually contact him if they like. <laughs> so um, yep. Yeah, let's continue. Whoa! Nearly had a heart attack there. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. So it's like an old Half-Life clone or something. I'm expecting something to like jump out in front of me. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. I'm kind of hesitant to talk too much because I don't want to talk over Davy's narration because it's really important. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Oops. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Enter engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Um, shoot a sec. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. <laughs> floating. Ooh, the beam a... causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. <coughs> 2008 still. That's a lot of bricks. I can't move. Interesting. The past was behind her. 
so try walking backwards. Oh. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. That's that's weird. Okay. Um. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. This is weird. I don't like it. <laughs> I suppose you can kind of see the evolution, the, the thought process that's there. Trying to be a bit more obscure. Express your artistic ideals. I have no idea how to progress. Oh. It's an interesting idea. An intriguing premise, at least. F a bit of a nightmare to play. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Still November 2008, seriously? This person had a lot of time. Okay, this is creepy as shit. I do not like this. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. What the fuck? That was weird. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Okay, I'm getting really slow. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Enter pressed. Whoa, what the fuck is going on here? A room that's warm, and nice, and filled with little ideas for games. <laughs> a normal game where you have to Koda scream. would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb <laughs> to get there. You are a gate. You're a gate. Call me a gate. What are you done? Okay, this doesn't look like a river or a fishing pond. You can't fish in concrete. Still not seeing well, this isn't for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. I, I think I solved it. Oh. 
Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. Why is there three red dots? Maybe three black dots, even. Colors? What colors? I'm blind. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. Seems a bit random, but I'll, I'll play along. I'm still thinking something's gonna fucking jump out at me at some stage. Mo. Can I? How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Looks like some freaky MC Escher painting. Oh no, we're back here again. I fucking hate this place. Aha! So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back oh, and can't start see to it understand ahead. what exactly that bigger picture is. Thought I was getting raped. It's fine. It's cool. I'm okay. No bum penetration. <laughs> 